Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and if you had to pick between having a monitor or a TV, which would you go for? Well, what if I told you you could have both in one? Let me introduce you to the Samsung Smart Monitor M8. And I say monitor, but this is just as much a TV as it is a regular 32 inch 4K monitor. Samsung reckon this is all you need when it comes to working and also, you know, kicking back and watching some Netflix or Disney or binging the latest tech chat videos on YouTube. But for 699 pounds, same in dollars, is this actually worth buying? Well, first of all, a big thank you to Samsung for sending this over for me to have a bit of a play with and also sponsoring this video. But as always, all opinions are my own. So what exactly can this do? Well, it has all the major streaming apps. You have free live TV channels, a remote control, USB-C and HDMI for hooking up your PC or your Mac. There's also screencasting and AirPlay for mirroring your phone, your PC or your Mac. We get smart home controls, a face tracking webcam, even a built-in browser, deck support and actually Office 365. So you don't even need a computer attached to this to use it. And there's also this very nifty detachable webcam, which just magnetically slots on the back there. It also comes with a little lens cap cover if you want uh, privacy or you can just physically take the whole thing off. And I love this design, especially having just come from the Apple Studio display, which is very good in its own right. But with that, there is no physical way of hiding the camera. It also supports Amazon's voice assistant. I don't want to say the name, it begins with A in case it triggers your one, as well as Bixby, of course. The thing is, I genuinely haven't seen a monitor with as many features as the M8 since, well, last year's M7. This is actually Samsung's second attempt at their smart monitor following the old model that I reviewed last year. And while the M7 shares a lot of the same smart, well, smarts as the new M8, it was let down a little bit by fairly ropey image quality and a bit of a cheap build, especially given the price. Don't get me wrong, I did like the M7, but this just feels like a refinement in almost every way, including image quality, which is much better, but there are still a couple of issues, which I'll come to later in the video. Design-wise, I think this thing looks great with narrow bezels, a slim profile with this flat back, and also this herringbone kind of texture. We also get this neat little camera module and a nice clean design stand. We even get four apparently flavorful color options, although the color only extends to the stand and this little strip along the front. Height adjustment is pretty good, although it won't get quite high enough to sit above a 13 or 14 inch laptop screen, unless you tilt it a fair bit as well. And there's also no swivel, except for moving the whole thing. And the range of tilt is only just okay. So who should actually buy this? Well, I think it's kind of aimed at families, uh, students, even businesses, where maybe you can't have a TV and a monitor for space or money issues, uh, and you just want something that does everything in one. The screen basically acts as an all-in-one work, entertainment, and smart home hub. Now, if you are a regular on the channel, and if not, why not? But you'll hear me go on about how 27-inch 4K monitors are just a bit too small. You really want 32 inches to fully take advantage of that higher resolution, which is what we have here. And I think this is the ideal size that's big enough you could use as a TV, maybe in the bedroom, you know, from a few feet away, but also not so huge that it takes up your entire desk. So you simply pick up the remote and turn it on, and you'd be forgiven for thinking this is a TV. The interface, the settings menu, feels lifted straight from a Samsung TV. But actually, once you get used to it, it does all start to make sense, with all the entertainment stuff under media, and then wireless casting options under workspace, and with settings covering inputs and shortcuts and other smart home controls. Every now and then I do see it sort of take a second or slow down a little bit, so uh, a slightly faster processor perhaps would have been nice, but generally, most of the time, it is pretty quick. So media is basically the home screen, and you get suggested TV and movies from streaming apps like Netflix, Disney+, Prime, Apple TV, and all the main UK-based ones. It also suggests shows from Samsung TV+, Plus, which streams live TV channels via a TV-style guide. There aren't that many to choose from, and also some of them are pretty obscure, but it is free extra content, and it's kind of fun. We don't get a TV tuner built into this, everything is streamed, uh, but you could always hook up a cable or satellite box via HDMI if you wanted to. I tell you what, it is weird doing this job sometimes, watching yourself back and sort of spending hours staring at your own face when you're editing videos. Anyway, as you'd expect from an all-in-one display like this, we do get built-in speakers. By design. I mean, seriously. Like so. I'm holding the 15-inch 
one here, one handed. Just and they get pretty loud. We're talking LG gram levels of light. Definitely levels. lacking in a bit of bass. I still think a good pair of speakers, uh, perhaps Bluetooth speakers, would be better to really get that sort of immersive experience, especially if you're watching movies. But they're okay. It does also have some clever adaptive sound tech that alters the audio to match ambient conditions. But for me, I'd still prefer to have a separate set of speakers. Now around the back, we have two USB-C ports, one of which supports DisplayPort, and also a micro HDMI. And yes, they do bundle a micro to full HDMI cable with the display. In either case, I got full 4K60 without any issues. And if you do go through the USB-C port, then you also get 65 watt laptop charging. And you can also use the M8 as a hub by connecting peripherals or storage drives to the second USB-C port. Alternatively, you can just cast your phone, your PC or your Mac straight to the display, which is incredibly easy to set up. Although depending on your connection, you may feel a bit of that latency and lag. You can also use the M8 to control your smart home via the SmartThings control panel. Although whether this is easier than just grabbing your phone in the first place, I'm not sure, but it is pretty convenient having the option direct on screen, especially as you can use the voice assistant even in standby mode. We also get a built-in Tizen OS interface for browsing as well as Office 365. Just connect up a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard and you're good to go, no PC needed. Alternatively, if you install remote access to your computer at work, then you can actually log into it from the M8 at home. We also get multi-view, which lets you use picture by picture or picture in picture from different inputs. There are so many options with this, and some of them you may never actually want to use, but others could be exactly why you want to buy this. Now there is a quick setup process required. It's not just plug and play like a regular monitor, but it's easy, and you can either use the remote or the SmartThings app on your phone. Once you're up and running, you can jump into the settings menu, which is, as I say, lifted straight from a Samsung TV. Although we do get some specific picture modes, depending if you're working or after some entertainment. There's even a dedicated game mode. So far, so good then. But what about the actual image quality, the panel? Well, I think it is worth keeping in mind that this is more of a general purpose screen. It's not really designed for pro level graphics or editing, but more for everyday office tasks and entertainment. So I must admit it was pretty surprising that it's as color accurate as it is. I tested it in multiple picture modes and found the graphics option to be the most accurate. It is also a matte screen, which helps reduce reflections. We do get HDR 10 plus support and also brightness maxes out at around 425 nits, which is okay. Viewing angles are, they're not the best. You definitely want to be sort of front and center with this. That is something perhaps I would have liked to see and more of an improvement on, especially as this could be, you know, on the other side of your room if you're watching TV with it. I also found when there's a bright white background that you do get some quite obvious vignetting or dimming towards the left and right hand edges, even when you're sat dead center. But overall, considering the price and what this is meant to do, I think it's pretty good. So if you go to connected devices, then hop over to Samsung Slim Fit Camera, which we've got mounted on top of here. You can, hi there. <laughs> you can make Google Duo calls straight through the display. You could also use it to uh, watch yourself while also watching a YouTube video. They suggest you could uh, check your form uh, while you're doing your bicep curls and you do all your stuff like that, which is pretty cool. And you can change the source and also uh, how big the screen is, where it is if you want to set picture in picture, uh, add Bluetooth speakers if you want. They've thought of everything. You also have the option up here to turn on smart camera, which then follows your face and keeps you nice and center in the frame. Or if you prefer the wider field of view and not that motion, you can just turn it off. All right, there we go. This is being recorded with the webcam on top of the smart monitor. I've got this running off my laptop, which is hooked up via USB-C. So hopefully it gives you an idea of the video and audio quality. So I reckon by this point, you're either thinking, yes, give it to me, take my money. That is what I've been looking for uh, in terms of a display, a TV and a monitor. Or you're thinking, well, some nice features there, but probably not something I would use very often. In which case, perhaps look elsewhere. But if you are after a good quality 32 inch 4K display, that can also be a bit of a TV and a bit of a smart home hub for you, considering it's what, just under 700 pounds, $700, I think it's pretty good value. And also we get this nice slim design. But what do you reckon? Could you see yourself using this? Let me know what you make of the M8 in the comments below. And I'll also leave a link in the description if you want to check this out for yourself. Thank you so much for watching guys, and I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.